Hey guys, welcome to Sri Ram's IS. Now in this video, we will be discussing a very important topic related to prelims 23. That is the tiger census. Now this video will come in two parts. Now after watching both the parts, you will get all the necessary information which is related to tiger. Whether it is tiger conservation, the new statistics that came out and what all international initiatives launched in order to conserve tiger. So I welcome you all to Sri Ram's IS. For all of your information, we are announcing the new upcoming batches at Sri Ram IS. So there is a new foundation course that is starting from 13th of April okay now this foundation course will target your CSC 24 the civil services examination of 24 where all the subjects will be done in a very detailed and comprehensive manner then guys we are also introducing a crash course for prelims 23 so all those aspirants who are looking for a short and crisp course for the upcoming prelims, you can join us where we will be giving a crash course on current affairs, general studies as well as CSAT. So here are the details. Then we are also introducing optional for the following subjects and the batch, the batches are starting from 15th of April. Now guys, Sriram IS, Sriram's IS has a track record of 35 years of long journey dedicated enough to produce thousands and numbers of aspirants over the, the, this long journey. So this is the result of 2022. So this is me, my brief introduction. My name is Anshum Verma and if you want to join Sriram IS, you can use code Srirams and you can get a straight 25% off on all the courses. So guys, let us start the discussion on Tiger Census. We can link this topic from GS3 conservation from our mains syllabus. However, we are going to pick some all necessary facts in this video which are important for your prelims 23. Now to begin with why this tiger census came in news. Now very recently just two days back the Prime Minister of India has released the fifth tiger census which include the tiger census of 2022. Okay so this data is revealed. And the, in, this, in this news, we came to know that there is a 6.7% increase of tiger population which is recorded in past 4 years. Now this tiger census covered almost 20 states in India and the scientists have used all latest technologies and methods to calculate the population of tiger. So we are going to talk about all those methods, all those population which is the statutory agency in this video. Now guys one more important information in this video that there is something big which was announced by India. Now this was announced on the mark of 50 years completion of project tiger. Now this new initiative is called as the International Big Cat Alliance. Now before coming to all these data and statistics, let us first know a little about our friend Tiger here. So what is so unique about Tiger? Now guys, Tigers are the largest of the cat species and it is a very important species in an ecosystem. It occupies a apex predator 
now it is a apex predator of any ecosystem so if i if we talk about what is the status of tiger in our country or internationally at iucn this tiger is classified as endangered now guys do remember this classification because upsc is very um, keen to ask all the aspirants such important information then guys there is one more international convention that is cites the convention in the trade of endangered species now in this convention tiger lies in appendix 1 also the wildlife protection act of 1972 the tiger lie in schedule 1 now this appendix 1 and schedule 1 means that the tiger or the hunting of tiger is prohibited also some more important prelims related fact that the world tiger day is celebrated on 29th of july now before coming to that why this 29th of july is chosen as the world tiger day can any one of you comment in the comment box below in this video and can tell us that why we celebrate world tiger day on 29th of july then guys a little more information about tiger and the tiger reserves the largest tiger reserve in india are nagarjun sagar sri salem tiger reserve which is located in andhra pradesh the smallest tiger reserve in india is bog tiger reserve in maharashtra and the highest tiger density that means number of tiger per square kilometer area is recorded in jim corbett national park so all this information is important guys moving ahead when i talk about tigers in the world or their population in the world so there is something called as a tiger range countries now what are these tiger range country these are the group of those countries where tiger population exists and the tiger population are found in open wild areas that means they the tiger roams freely in these countries so right now there are around 13 countries which belong to tiger range countries however slowly and slowly it, uh, this number is increasing now the tiger are found in total eight sub species total eight sub species have been existed in the past however three of them has been extinct now you have to remember the name of the three sub species because upsc loves to ask such type of questions so the bali tiger the javan tiger and the caspian tiger these three types of sub species have existed or it used to exist in the past but right now they are extinct okay the only five surviving tiger species are the indian tiger or royal bengal tiger which is native to indian subcontinent which we also called as the royal bengal tiger which is found in the sundarban area then the indo chinese tiger this is another sub species then the siberian or the amur tiger then the sumatran tiger and the south china tiger now these are the five sub species which still exist okay now before going into the details of the tiger census let us dig some past so in order to conserve tiger in late 1973 Pro project tiger was introduced by indira gandhi government it was introduced in the jim corbett national park now this tiger population there was a time when thousands and thousands of tiger used to coexist with humans in india it was recorded that somewhere around 20000 to 40000 tigers existed in india during the time of the british colonization okay but with time this tiger 
was the population started decline why because of a of a very uh, we can say a a amusing um, habit of maharajas and then carried it by the britishers that is the hunting the 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 game of hunt that he, they used to play so hunting was the major reason why the population of tiger declined very rapidly then guys there were other regions as well other regions include the biggest region poaching now guys if you are aware of uh, a little uh, uh, poaching about poaching now tiger or i say the every part of tiger's body is used or is smuggled internationally now there is a use of each and every part of tiger's body which in some places are used for the medicinal purposes in some places it is used for the ornamental purposes and in some places this tiger is used for showcasing your wealth okay for example aapne dekha hoga how the earlier uh, rich people used to wear those tiger skins theek hai so all these reasons resulted in dwindling down of the number of tigers it reduced to just 1820 in 1970 okay so now this now tiger occupies a important position in the food chain right it occupies a very important position in food chain as it is a apex predator okay guys now apex predator so any disturbance in the population of apex predator can impact the complete food chain so a group of conservationist and the researchers they applied a continuous pressure on the indian government during 1970s and among this there was one renowned man who was let's say he is known as the father of tiger conservation in india he is none other than dr kailash sankhala now you can see the he is mr dr Sank, uh, kailash sankhala he personally appealed prime minister indira gandhi many time and who proved to be sympathetic sympathetic and understanding the needs of india's natural heritage now as a result of this as well as some international conferences the pressure coming from the international conventions and the global world india constituted wildlife protection act in 1972 and just after launching or passing this act then the project tiger was launched in 1973 now even the government of india recognized the role of dr kela sankhala and he was named as the first director to the project tiger in india so this was a little background of project tiger so as we have just discussed this project tiger was launched in 1973 launched from where jim corbett national park in uttarakhand by the way this was the first national park declared in our country now this project tiger was a centrally sponsored scheme that means the all the funding will come from the central government itself and this scheme was monitored back then by ministry of environment which is now commonly known as the ministry of environment forest and climate change now initially when this project tiger was launched it was launched in nine tiger reserves in different state of india what was the objective of this project tiger obviously survival and maintenance of tiger population which constituted the tiger reserves throughout the india so all the tiger reserves they wanted their survival and maintenance and they worked on the growth the growth in their population so it provides a central assistance to the tiger range uh, states which in itself will give you 
uh, will give a in situ conservation to the tiger now what do you mean by in situ con conservation guys in situ conservation means on site conservation where the tiger is found in its natural habitat so the conservation in its natural habitat now what who was the implement, uh, implementing agency of the project tiger now there was a need to follow or there was a need to uh, constitute a separate agency in order to do the conservation of the tigers so as a result the wildlife protection act was amended in 2006 and there was a body a statutory body was created called as national tiger conservation authority now it is a statutory body which was formed after amending your wildlife protection act in 2006 now again the funding of project tiger further it will get assistance from 60 percent from the states and the overall 50 percent expenditure on all will be provided uh, by the center okay so the center will provide financial assistance to the state that is 60 percent 40 percent states will contribute and other than that the remaining 50 percent of the expenditure will also be borne by the state which is like non reckoning items okay and for the northeastern and the himalayan state the the center will contribute 90 percent of the funds now this is a simple classification of a centrally sponsored scheme so all centrally sponsored schemes are generally um, uh, bifurcated the revenue uh, divisions are like this only okay so right now there are 18 states which are covered under project tiger then guys further what are the achievements of this project tiger now the project tiger has now after a long battle over the years india is successful successfully uh, grown the tiger population to 3167 right now now this is the current tiger population and india hosts more than 75 percent of the global wild tiger population that means if we if we count the overall wild tiger population which is openly roaming india accounts for 75 percent of those tigers now there is a very good rate of population increase here that is six percent now all this is because of the efforts that the governments have put in both the center and the state in project tiger now guys further there were some new tiger reserves which were added over the period of time now at the launch of project tiger there were nine reserves right now the tiger reserves has increased to 54 covering almost 75,000 square kilometer of area now which accounts for 2.4 percent of india's geographical area then in order to curb on poaching the illegal wildlife trade the illegal wildlife trade related to the tiger products we have also launched a special tiger protection force which are deployed in all these strategically tiger um, tiger reserve areas now this force is well trained and equipped with modern technology to carry out patrolling in throughout the year as in it covers the monsoon patrolling it covers the patrolling during the breeding season and it also covers the patrolling through your regular part of the year now it also this project tiger also worked on the awareness among the local people so as we know that urbanization is expanding the urban centers are expanding and we are witnessing man animal conflict we have seen the animals 
are getting into the urban areas so over the period of time we have also carried on awareness campaign especially among the local uh, people who resides near the periphery of these tiger reserves so this was also part of the project tiger then some scientific research and monitoring has also helped in order to have a better understanding of the tiger behavior the tiger ecology and the population dynamics so the research and monitoring has also helped in the increase of tiger population over the years now guys let us very quickly see that what all techniques are used to measure tiger population now in this video we're going to talk about three broader techniques which is generally used by scientists across the globe so the first technique is the pug mark technique now the estimation of tiger population in in order to do the estimation you should have a exact estimation of the number of tiger living in a area then not just the number but their density okay how many tigers are spread across what area and then some change in their indices that means the change in the number over the period of time for example the measure of tiger occupancy in a given area so it is carried out at a regular interval uh, so the first technique that is used to collect the data is the pug mark technique now pug mark technique is basically the impression of the tiger foot okay those are called as the pug mark as you can see in these images now what is so unique about pug mark that each tiger has a unique pug mark okay now if you can study that pug mark after researching on that as a pug mark in the area you can come to a conclusion on the number of tigers in that area so for example you can see even the pug mark of a male and a female tiger different uh, they are different and the pug mark of two different male tigers will also differ so this is a indicator which will help the scientist to know the relative abundance of tiger population in that area moving ahead there is some modern techniques which are available like some advanced motion sensor based cameras okay now these motion sensor based cameras are installed at some strategic location in the uh, in the open forest okay this is uh, they are installed in the um, uh, open locations in the forest so as soon as they record a a, um, a motion so they capture the 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 photos and then there is one more method known as the dna fingerprinting method okay there is one more method known as the dna fingerprinting method now in this technique uh, you can collect um, scats now what is scats basically the tiger shit now on analyzing the tiger shit slash scats you can also get to know what are the type of or uh, type of tiger and uh, you can have a better monitoring on tigers that what is right now in what condition the tigers of that area are then guys a very very unique um, initi <coughs> initiative which was launched by ntca national tiger conservation authority by the way in the next part of this video i will tell you or we will discuss what is ntca and what is its rules how it performs the tiger um, uh, protection and conservation in india then we will also see some international initiative and then we will come to what all findings have come out in this recent session now m stripes is a monitoring system for tiger with intensive protection and ecological status now what is this m stripes basically this n stripe m stripe is the study of the stripes on the tiger 
so just like your fingerprints each tiger has a different kind of stripes on their skin so after analyzing these stripes and then plotting it on the geographic information system you can count the number of tigers in that place okay so these are the methods used by the tigers before ending this session i would like to discuss one very important international conference which is to decide or which you can say initiated the tiger, tiger convention globally the aim of this convention which is also called as the saint petersburg's declaration it was adopted in november 2010 now initially it was adopted by the 13 tiger range country what are these 13 tiger range country as i have told you in the starting of this video the tiger range countries are those countries where the tigers are found in the wild that means they can roam freely so this st petersburg declaration decided a resolution to implement a mechanism called as global tiger recovery program now this global tiger recovery program seeks to grow tiger population to double in the period in the next 10 years the tar the target was in the next 10 years and they they uh, uh, the target year in this project was 2022 now all those 13 tiger range countries are bangladesh bhutan cambodia china india indonesia laos malaysia myanmar nepal russia thailand and vietnam by the way in the next video we will see that when did india achieved this target so this is all for this video i am very soon coming up with the part 2 of this discussion where i will be talking about what all findings and what is the new initiative launched by india so i request all my viewers to please like this video and you can hit the bell icon to subscribe the channel so that you can uh, get the update of all the upcoming videos and also do not forget to share thank you